in here at the Kessler Athletic Center getting ready for tip-off tonight between the Longwood Lancers and the Canisius College Golden Griffins. And the Griffs are about to be announced here as their starting lineups. Longwood's already been through that. Dance team routine going on here. Kevin Sylvester and Ben Wagner here with you. Let's look at the Longwood Lancers. Starting lineup for tonight's matchup here on Time Warner Cable. Nick Brown, the freshman at guard. Tristan Carey, they call him TT. David Robinson playing with a tooth ailment. Michael Kessens and Jelani Dublin round out the forwards for the Longwood Lancers. And Mike Gillian in his 10th season as coach of the Longwood Lancers. He's built this program from a Division III program to a Division I. Now their first year in the Big South Conference. Now let's take a look at the home team and their first home game since November 20th. The Canisius College Gold of Griffins, Harold Washington, the senior, Billy Barron, Isaac Sosa, the three guard rotation, Chris Manhurts at forward, and Josiah Heath will start tonight in place of his brother Jordan, who suffered an ankle injury Saturday at Syracuse. And of course, Jim Barron, his first season, but not his first season in college basketball or in Western New York. Of course, many fans remember him from his tenure at St. Bonaventure, not only playing as an assistant coach and head coach, and then, of course, at Rhode Island, as Isaac Sosa is announced here to the home fans. And Ben, strange that they haven't played here since November 20th, almost a month ago. There's a lot of ebb and a lot of flow this time of season when it comes to college basketball because of finals. A lot of teams won't play during dead week either, so there's a lot going on if you're a student athlete but it also makes from a very erratic scheduling standpoint trying to maneuver that, especially in the mid-major level, because so many schools will go on the road, they'll play in tournaments around Thanksgiving, and you can find yourself not even on campus for five or six days. That means you have these huge holes in your schedule, and the end result, Canisius, nearly a month without playing here at the CAC. As we mentioned at the top of the show, this is just the second ever matchup. Canisius, a, a big win down there last season in mid-November. So the return game here for the Longwood Lancers. Three and seven on the season. See Petey. Griff here, ready to go for tip-off in this final home game until the 27th of December when they take on Elkhorn State, part of the Gotham City Classic, which the next matchup against Temple is also for Canisius. A new, unique, non-exempt event be very interesting to watch Longwood in their start to this game. There's a little bit more seasoning, especially in the front court for Canisius versus a very young Lancer team. Three underclassmen in the starting five. And for the first time, though, the Griffs will have a little tweak in their starting five. And the opening tip taken by the Lancers. Brown finds T.T. Carey. Robinson on the left side goes to the foul line to Dublin. Now Dublin on the baseline. He'll take the jump shot and he'll make it for the Lancers' first lead. 2-0. Well, this guy has been off to a great start this year after missing the entire season for the most part last year with a busted hand. He's got a nice touch through the summer. He was so anxious to get back on the floor and he's going to be a vital part of the attack for the Lancers. Over in the corner in front of the Lancers' bench, Washington working his way in. Finds his man in the corner, Sosa. He'll take the three and drain it. Great start for the Griffs, Isaac Sosa. Harold Washington is the creator. He's tough on penetration, much like Frank Turner. Maybe doesn't have the finishing power that Frank Turner became such a knack of, but Harold Washington, he loves to create. That dribble drive, kick out, a lot of open shots being created. David Robinson puts his own shot up off the glass, gets his rebound, works inside. He was stuffed by Heath. Own rebound again, and that one's in and out. Heath comes down with a rebound. A couple of bullets really dodged defensively for the grips. Good looks, just not able to convert, and very lucky. Pull up three by Billy Barron, and he thought it was good. Rebound taken there by Michael Kessens. Quickly to the hoop, the other end. They're going to run it, and block shot by Heath. Sent the T.T. Carey shot away. Sosa, another three. Get it! Second one. Six to two, quick start here for the Grips. That is a great pace that Canisius is coming out, setting up shots, getting outstanding looks, and if they're there, they're gonna hit them. Much more in rhythm than down the stretch at Syracuse. We're seeing a good start for the Canisius uh, team. 
Back out to Brown. He thought about the three. Crossover dribble. Drives the lane off the glass. Nice shot by Nick Brown. You know, I was talking with some of the staff for Canisius, and they mentioned Nick Brown and his ability to create off the dribble. They've got ways to score in a couple of different facets. Sosa again hits his third triple. We're not even three minutes in. Hot hand, three-point ball was working over the weekend. Hot shooting from downtown continues. Right now, Mike Gillian and Lancers are saying, say it ain't Sosa. Five threes for Sosa at the Carrier Dome. Nick Brown drives, hands it off, goes a baseline. Dublin shot off the front rim, rebound by Josiah Heath. And look at all those white jerseys around the iron, too. Plenty of rebounding strength for the Griffs. Why not? Again, Sosa knocked down, no foul on the call, missed that one front rim, and the Lancers will push. Driving the basket, nifty layup there by David Robinson, up and under. A lot of people were concerned about how he would come out of the gate dealing with that tooth ailment. Doesn't look like he's missed a step. They weren't sure what to call it. With It was abscessed, displaced, broken, painful. He's wearing a mouth guard tonight, first time. Man hurts, fouled on the floor on his way to the basket. And he'll take the ball out underneath the basket. Great pace to this game to start. Three minutes and 10 seconds in. Washington finds Barron in front of the Lancers bench. Back over to Washington. He'll take the long three from the corner. Off the front rim. Manhurts rebound. Back up with it. He got it. That was perfectly timed. A soft bounce off the iron help for Manhurts, but perfectly timed on the elevation. You could see the Lancers go up. They started to come back down as Manhurts was going back up and got an easy finish. He's been really good the last four games. Almost 12 points per contest. He's been really grabbing a lot of boards as well. Nick Brown missed the rim on that one off the board and Desai Heath another rebound. Barron behind the back dribble down the left side. Scoop and didn't get the roll. Man hurts another board off the glass and in. He'll go to the line for three. Michael Kessens as good as he is offensively there's some lapses defensively and that was one of them because no block out, easy slip, easy find and then plus one for Man hurts at the line. Here we go again. Watch Billy Barron. Just can't finish with the right hand. He got the look, and then the slip around Kessens. Manhurts got the bump. Easy call and easy opportunity to get to the line. Manhurts does not complete the three-point play opportunity. Long pass up, three-point attempt coming, and off the back rim, tipped up, and a team rebound there for the Griffs on the carry miss. 13-6, our score. Washington trying to make it 15. Drives out corner. Sosa takes it again, makes his fourth three in our first five minutes. Well, you know, the challenge has already been set. He comes off the court with five threes at the Carrier Dome. Maybe we'll have six. Maybe we'll have a little bit more for Sosa, but there's a definite aggressive nature for Sosa from downtown. Came in tonight shooting 39% from three-point arc. That long shot by Robinson in and out. Again, three grips there on the board. Heath comes away with it again. I don't know if that is what Longwood needs to do in this game. They are not a good three-point shooting team. And Heath takes the shot on the baseline. Nice hustle there by Washington, but out of bounds, it'll be Lancer's ball. And we will take the timeout on the floor. 15-19 to play first half. Sosa's hot from three. The Griffs lead 16-6 here on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel.
Look at our edge board tonight. Offense goes to the Griffs tonight along with the defense rebounding to Longwood. Free throws and tangibles all to the Griffs tonight in the second ever matchup. And they are living up to it right now early on. 16-6 with 15-19 to play in the first half. Isaac Sosa, if you just joined us, with four three-pointers already. He and Chris Manhurts are the offense so far tonight for the Griffs. Sosa with the dozen, and Manhurts with four. It's pretty good. You're on the court for five minutes, and you have 12 points. Yeah, already efficient. above your average, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Came in average in 8.3. <laughs> Nick Brown trying to work the ball up high. Finds Dublin, now back to Gary, back to Brown. Brown, he'll pull up from three and make it. Big shot there for the Lancers to cut the lead to seven. Four for 12 now for the field. Nick Brown, a little bit of an unorthodox shot. He goes up, has his right elbow cocked way out and almost palms the ball forward. Inside, Esprila is in. On the baseline, he turns, finds Manhurts, dunks! That is a patient find for Espria. The defense got a little anxious, thought maybe that they could go for the double team, force either the timeout, maybe get a steal while trapping on the baseline. But Espria with great find, and then the big hammer by Manhurts. Brown thought about that other one off the back rim. Espria on the floor, and he is tied up. And possession belongs to the Griffs. Lancers will bring in Lucas Woodhouse and Jeff Havenstein. Brown and Dublin will take a rest. I don't see this Lancers team get too deep. Lucas Woodhouse, though, is one of the guys that Highly touted coming in as a recruit and part of this transition phase from D3 to D1. Newsday dubbed him the Long Island Player of the Year. He's got some quality minutes his first year in the program. Man hurts with six so far, trying to back his man in. Back out to Washington. So, so long three off the front rim. Hands cooled off here a bit. Of course, that was probably a little deeper than Coach Barron wanted. Just a little bit of rush, too. You're coming around that screen. You're going to see a lot of pick and pop from Canisius. Shot negated. We have an offensive foul on Michael Kessens. Bodies hit the deck. Russell came out. And you're always hesitant to say, oh, that's offensive. That's defensive. Because you never know, especially with the, the fevered pace that this game has established through the first almost seven minutes so far. I was pretty sure. I was pretty sure, too. <laughs> Alshuan Himes in now with the ball inside to Esprila. He's going to back his man down. Throws an elbow and runs into Havenstein, and they'll call him for a travel. Nice defense down low by the Lancers. Well, that's the bonus when you can double team quickly on the block. You've got that guy sliding in from behind. You don't even pick it up on the peripheral bridge. And if you don't have a good communication on your offensive side, and those things get called out, that's the result. Travels and turnovers. Cross-court pass to Woodhouse, and he misses it. Rebound, Manhurts had it, lost it, but off of Kessens, and Griffs get the basketball. It's not as if the Lancers aren't getting shots here, Ben. They're getting some opportunities, just not making them. Yeah, field goal percentage, that's the tough side. And when you're going to go from downtown, too, and they're not a good three-point shooting club, and you meet a lot of teams that can shoot from the perimeter, you play a lot of catch-up. Himes will pull up for the jumper. That's short. Rebound goes to Kessens. Nice box out there on Esprila. Havenstein over to Carey. Cross-court pass all the way over. Working his way inside. The Kessens, nice feed there from Ziegler and... The lead is now down to seven. Boy, it went from disaster looking to high fives and handshakes on the way back down the court. You get caught that far underneath the basket, you are in a world of hurt. But then he forgot about the other guys sitting there in the paint. It was a good find for an easy score. Barron with 18 in the shot clock, jumps through on the dribble and fouled on the floor. And Carey will... Actually, another call Woodhouse on the foul. Fouls on the floor, non-shooting foul. 
Zai Heath comes back in for the Griffs, and Reggie Groves checks in for the first time tonight. Sosa and Manhurts will take a breather. Dublin comes back in for Kessens for the Lancers. Probably see Groves run a lot of the point now that he's back on the floor, and they feed it right to him, try to set something up. That's a design on the inbound. Barron thought that one was going. He's had two good looks at it tonight. Neither have fallen for him. Buckets just don't have to come after that initial pass on the inbound. You can draw the defense, turn everybody's attention just by sliding a little bit to the left. And that's when Barron can slide through everybody, go against the grain, just getting to get the shot to fall. We'll take the timeout, 11.49 to play here in the first half. Griffs lead by seven on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Let's take a look at our top guns tonight, Ben. Well, no surprise who we're going to look at. T.T. Carey, after an unbelievable game in the win for Longwood, 25 points, nine rebounds, four assists. He can do it all. He's got a lot of minutes when he's on the floor. And Harold Washington, somebody that we already talked about, lost his streak of 10 games of 12 or more his last time out on the road at Syracuse, but he is one of those players that will come up huge in conference play. Carey from the corner, high arc in that one. Dublin got the rebound. Woodhouse working against Groves. Penetrates, lost the ball. Carey there to help him out. He'll try and drive. Bounce pass over, and nice feed down low, and the foul as Jelani Dublin makes the basket and will go for the three-point play. It's been a little bit quiet. He had the first bucket of the game for the Lancers, but showed outstanding body control. Racing for the impact, he knew it was coming to finish and then get the hoop. That's a nice bounce pass on the baseline, too. Then coming straight across, you had Billy Barron from the backside. A contact coming from the front side. Hung up just enough to complete a three-point play. And Dublin does. He has five. Matter of fact, he's the only player currently on the floor with points in this game. That's amazing. You look at all this high-octane scoring and the pace that we've had. So many points coming from Sosa, but the guy that holds all the points and bragging rights on the floor right now <laughs> has five. That's the Griffs' lead, 18-14, but their entire lineup on the floor right now has donuts on the board. At the turnover, Lancers will try to set and cut the lead. Currently four. Woodhouse over in front of the Griffs bench to the foul line. Pulls up, feeds Dublin on the wing shot, drains it. That's a nice shot. And Dublin, he knows that was a big shot. He pumped his fist coming back. He's feeling a good rhythm tonight. That's been established. Got seven. He averages eight. Lead down to two. Nearly midway through the first half. Groves works his way around. 
Finds Barron. Drives back to Heath. Himes, three-pointer. Off the back iron, into the corner. Rebound to the Lancers. Woodhouse, he'll push the pace, too. Ziegler on the wing. Havenstein, left side. Carey, three-pointer. In and out. He can't get it to drop here tonight. Ziegler tried to make a move, but stepped out of bounds on the baseline. Nice run by the Lancers. 10-0 advantage over the last five minutes. Conditions who had that hot start in downtown really, really cooling off. They bring Harold Washington back and Chris Manhurts into the lineup. Sprela and Himes. Groves running the point. To Himes, left side to Washington. He'll try to penetrate. Spins. In low to Manhurts. He'll work his way inside off the window. Didn't get to go. Got his own rebound. Up again and in. Great work inside by Manhurts. Those are points produced like playing like a man, too. I mean, that is a hard effort bucket. Manhurts going through the double team, missing once, fighting for it, and leaning back to get the kiss. He has eight on the night. They're doing a great job on the offensive glass. Down low, Kesson spins on a Spreela. And Spreela will be called for the foul. Looks like he had nice position, and he can't believe it. Spreela bailed him out because his Kessens will learn as he develops as a player on the post to feel where that defender is. And he had him beat with the angle. Watch it right here. Kessens goes as Spreela starts to work his way up the paint. A quick drop step can get him an easy high percentage shot just quickly by dropping back, maybe using an elbow, set up the brace, you get that drop step, you've got a clean look. And Kessens makes the first. Anthony Taylor checks in for the first time tonight for the Lancers, he wears number three. And David Robinson also back. Kessens has got it to two once again. And gets it. 2018. Brown also back in for the Lancers, and we have a foul on the floor on Jelani Dublin. He came out, put the body on Washington. And his third, yeah. Yeah, th three personal fouls immediately to the bench. Mike Liam is going to turn around and try to clean up the foul situation. Now, there's so much time left in this first half. But you saw some aggressiveness on the perimeter. You on both the offensive and defensive side, and the grips just went right at us. Said, all right, if you're gonna try to body up, we're gonna turn into you, see if we can pick up a ticky-tack foul 30 feet away from the hoop. Man hurts to set the pick. Washington threw it inside a Spria. Easy two for the big man. Wow, the finds in the paint. Big time production by the front court of the Griffs. Somebody's gotta get in the ball. We've seen great court vision. Taylor inside to Kessens. And he'll pull up for the jumper. Off the iron. Rebound comes to Groves. Tipped by Washington. He's looking to push the pace again. Quick cross court. Himes three pointer. Back iron. Espria and Brown. And Brown wins that battle. Brown down the floor. Couldn't control it. Bodies flying over there. And we have it going to Canisius. No, we have a foul actually. And it's on Brown. I think the pace right now plays into the Griff's hands. They were a team that played at a high level at the get-go, got off some great start, transition points, easily produced. Lancers haven't been able to answer back. They're much more fluid in their offense, coming away with sets, trying to at least establish some good open looks. Washington, the man hurts, and he missed that shot. A little farther out than he probably is accustomed to. Those are tough shots, too, off the baseline like that, medium-range jumpers. If you don't have a good, solid, and confident set when you're able to make those shots, you develop that by making those shots. There's another one. I mean, these, these are tough for the, the front court to step out and just catch and shoot. Havenstein was the shooter for Longwood that missed that one. So they exchanged those. Medium range jumpers and misses with 7.40 to go in the first half, 22-18. Himes from the corner, three, got that one. 
25-18. There is so much sag in the Longwood defense. It's opening up these perimeter shots. Canisius is too good of a team from downtown for the Lancers to let them do that. Longwood averages their opponents 84 points a game. I mean, there are some breakdowns if your opponents are racking up 84 points a game. Brown tries to answer. Nice recovery by Spreya to get positioned down low for the rebound. Came out to cut it off. Himes, three again. Got it. Two in a row. And he turns around and is talking to the Longwood bench. He probably got some ribbing after a couple of those early misses. And now he goes back to back. Well, guess what? Big points and back up to a 10-point lead. Just like that. It seemed like it was two just a minute ago. Taylor. Trying to find Havenstein. Baseline, Kessins off the back rim. Rebound, Himes. He'll bring it up. Pull up three. Nope, inside is Spria. Give it to the big man off the glass and in. Unselfish play by Elshwan Himes. Himes could have driven in, and that's what Spria, I think, was looking for initially. That's why he sealed his man. What with the extra help? Well, give it a little flip. Get a big bucket. Robinson to the foul line. Goes right side to Kessens. He'll drive, runs to Espria, and he'll be called for the travel. That's too easy. That's too easy from where we sit to call. We have a timeout on the floor. The Griffs extend the lead now to 12 here on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel. Time to look at our coach's file for the Longwood Lancers. Ben on Mike Gillian. Mike Gillian, the only place that he knows, looking down the bench. Well, it's right here at Longwood. And I think a coach will take a lot of pride in transitioning his program from a D3 uh, classification up to a Division I. Now, a lot of that, you're going to have to go through some growing pains. But you've been at it a decade. You've established the players that you want. Now you're trying to transition and get the Division I recruits that you want to come down to Farmville, Virginia, and try to set and build your own program. And you know what? They can make some noise. The Big South is an up-and-down league. You have guys that get good for two or three years. We had the run by Withrop in the early 2000s. They made a couple of long runs through the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago as well. The, the Big South, especially in the changing landscape, will give institutions a chance to make their market with a splash if you do it right you can really create a nice a nice job for your program three from the corner David Robinson well, Robinson and the Lancers were just one for eight from three-point range they desperately needed to cut into that Canisius lead and it started to stretch to the largest of the, of the season Groves in the pull-up uses the window and the bank is open yeah, that's Groves just having a knack seeing the floor. He knew his guy had committed all the way on the baseline. It was out of control. Easy stop, little kiss off the window. Clean two points right there. With Brown is going to go all the way downtown and make the nice left-hand scoop. 
mentioned Winthrop there. Greg Marshall was the coach of those Winthrop teams. Greg Marshall took his talents to Wichita State in the Missouri Valley, and that is a strong mid-major institution. And you see coaches jump the landscape. And look what Jim Gross has been able to do, John Gross has been able to do, leaving Ohio, had developed such a strong program in the MAC and teams that we've covered right here on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel as well, giving Reggie Witherspoon and the UB Bulls fits. Now he had a great start this season at Illinois. So, I mean, these these kind of transitions, it's just not about the institution. It's about for the coaches as well, using it as a springboard. Tyrell Edwards misses the first of two as he was fouled on the drive to the hoop. Ziegler back in for the Lancers, as is Woodhouse. Actually had a chance to play golf with uh, Greg Marshall. Yeah. While I was working in Charlotte, and he was a coach with her. Great guy, and happy for his success. Edwards drains the second, his first point of the night. You know, Ten point lead. It's tough to keep programs running and, and recruit at a high level. Greg Marshall did such a good job of establishing Winthrop and getting them on the map. That's easier to, to get guys to take that plane ticket, come down, get that official campus visit, and you find out, well, where is Fort Mill, South Carolina? And you get to learn a little bit more about the community. Well, it's in suburban Charlotte, but just across the state border. But, you know, Randy Peel goes to Winthrop, and he struggles to kind of keep that momentum moving forward, and they had a change of scenery at Winthrop last year. Offensive foul coming up on Edwards here on the pick as Himes is about to launch a three-pointer. And see Jim Barron telling his team, don't foul the offensive end. I'm sure something along those lines. Coaches hate those, particularly when open shot. 4.20 to go here. Ten-point lead for the Griffs in the first half at the Kessler. Woodhouse trying to pick and roll with Kessler. He'll take the three instead. In and out. Unfriendly roll here for the road team. And Himes will push the pace. He'll take it to the bucket. Feeds Edwards and can't get the... Roll off the back rim, and nice hustle by Himes. Pushes his man down there. An offensive foul is the call as Jeffrey Anderson comes up from the baseline to make that one. I think he got it right, too. It looked like Himes did push you off. Uh, yeah, I think, and he was looking straight at the play, too, so it's a little bit easier if you want to make that call. Now watch this in transition. You see Himes, well, right there, that's the, that's the push, and you can see Jeff Anderson standing right behind the play. Ziegler trying to look inside to Kessens. Guarded by Josiah Heath. He'll spin. Reverse. Nice block by Heath. Three-pointer, though, results from the corner. In and out. Kessens on the rebound. Back to Robinson. He thought about the three. And Woodhouse will slow the pace here and reset for the Lancers. Penetration right side, pass out, and Carey makes the three on the free from Woodhouse. T.T. T. Carey. Good extension by T.T. Carey. His first bucket of the night at 25 in his last outing. Nice spin by Washington. Off the glass and in. Oh. That is a wow made for Mike Menega. Paid you five bucks to mention his name in the broadcast, right? And I'll pick up that five bucks, too. I'll help you collect. Mm -hmm. One of the assistants on the Griff's bench. Two years set in this chair as well as an analyst for us on college basketball. And he loved to see guys create for themselves in power play. Speaking of Mike, there he is. All right, Tyrell Edwards called for a foul. We'll have to see the resulting free throws for the Lancers when we return. A nine-point lead for the Griffs here on Time Warner Cable Sports Channel.
We're back and take a look at the home coaches file Jim Barron. Well a lot has been made about this homecoming of sorts back to Western New York and I really think his first task at hand was the hard work and the ethic that he established from his first team meeting on. He said, yeah, we're going to have a lot of fun, but with that fun, we need to see improvement time in and time out. It only gets hard if you make it harder on yourself. Well, a six and two start, nobody can argue with that. I mean, that's one of the best starts, not only for Jim Barron's career, but for the Golden Griffs. Nice block from behind by Sosa. The foul was on the floor. It wasn't a shooting foul before the break. And off that inbound play, Ziegler shot stuffed by Sosa. His eyes watering. He may have had a little contact across the bridge of his nose. He's still trying to blink it out. Same play. Ziegler gets the shot off after moving in a bit. Rebound. Up and oh, somehow that does not go twice. Ziegler, nifty behind the back shot there. Out of bounds though, off of Longwood. And that look says it all for the Lancers' first half. They can't get anything to go. The lid is on. Just a couple of easy buckets could take away a lot of that frustration. You get four looks at it. Rare to come away empty. Espria, top of the key. Dribbled twice there, finds Sosa in the corner. They'll guard him closely. He came out with four three-pointers. They want to travel over there, and Mike Gillian is very upset. Ten on the shot clock. Barron. Down the lane, runner, and may have been blocked. And a whistle on the floor. And Freddie Espria will be calling for his second personal, and it's a one and one as it's a seventh team foul. And speaking of not getting anything to go, Billy Barron can't make one yet tonight. Well, twice we've seen 10 point leads stretched out, and for the Griffs, we were talking in break two. If we Laid this scenario for the fans tuning in and people watching the game. All right, the leading scorer doesn't have any points. But Ooh. your Whoa. team has a 10-point lead. Do you think Billy Barron's part of the scoring equation? Everybody's going to say, well, yeah. And he drives here, and ball was blocked, maybe in a body on the floor. And appears like we do have a foul, but non-shooting. So Barron will inbound. Finds Heath over to Washington. Back to Barron. Josiah Heath quickly back out to Billy Barron. 20 on the shot clock. Looking for Manhurts down low or the dribble drive penetration. Pulls up. Finds Heath. Off the glass. Oh! Got his rebound and dunk by Manhurts. Cue the highlight film. Man, that is awesome. Timing the rebound. We've seen it already from Canisius, and that time, you're within range, just power it down. That was worth the price of admission. 37-26 with a minute 15 to play. Under 10 on the shot clock. Havenstein, back to Woodhouse, he's gonna have to shoot. Good defense, very active. Brown shot in and out, that's the third trip in a row where the ball has rolled around the rim and not gone down for the Lancers. Under a minute now to play here in the first half. Barron hands off Washington. He'll take a three. That one doesn't go either. I'm not sure which is tougher to take from a shooter standpoint. One you see spin all the way around the cup and kick out, or one that goes down and then pops out from the other side. That is tough. 20-second timeout taken by Mike Gillian and the Lancers. Can't take away that defensive effort from Canisius, though. I mean, you go through the entire shot clock. You're so active. Longwood tried to reverse the ball as well. There's a look at Manhurts with the flush. Watch this follow. There it is. Catches the ball while going right back up and stuffs it back in with a rim rattler. And the roar to it at the end. Well, if that doesn't make the highlight of the night, that's going to be an upset. He's been or the so enforcer's strong. destruction, or whatever Ooh, you... Good call. Yeah, I think I'm, that's my early nomination. He destroyed the rim on that one. Six rebounds, ten points for Chris Van Hertz. He's been so strong over the last month around the glass. And if Canisius is going to 
pick up victories. They've got to establish it first by rebounding the basketball. You cannot have their opposition, especially moving into league play. The Mac will hoist some shots. If you give teams in conference play extra chances, forget it. Griff's trapping there. Loose ball picked up by Nick Brown to get a bucket. So the timeout pays off for the Lancers as they cut the lead to nine. And Jim Barron will take a timeout of his own. 20 second timeout to set things up here for the final possession of the first half. 28 seconds. You don't have to rush anything. That's almost the entire length of a shot clock. You can go to the grease board, set up the play, and try to teach your team to patiently work for it because, let's face it, I mean, this is non conference competition. While, yes, you would like a win, 7-2 is an awesome mark to be at going into the new year. And, of course, to pick up a win in front of your home crowd, that's nice when you've been on the road for a month. But listen, I mean, there are moments within every game that coaches want to teach, and this is exactly that. You're going to go through something that you may have to go use in late January or February down the stretch. Who knows what the standings are going to look like, but if you can execute one of these plays in December when the pressure's not on, it makes it a lot easier down the home stretch. 